Hello, I'm Ollie. This is Crib and Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Um, today, crime and a book that I'm really, really excited to talk to you about. Um, it's The Heretic by Liam McIlvaney. So I want to start the review with a warning. Um, so this is the second book in the series and the publishers in the publicity material um, for the book, which I've seen on, on Goodreads, are suggesting that you can read it as a standalone. You can in that the author does a very good, you know, a very good um, job of describing what happens in the first book without, you know, so that new readers can catch up, but so that old readers aren't bored and alienated by it. Um, but I really would not read this book without having read the first book. Um, before you do. So the first book is called The Quaker, um, came out in 2018 um, and it's it's also fantastic. They're both very very good books um, but the, if you I, I think if you read this second book um, without having read The Quaker first um, then two things are going to happen. Firstly you're going to want to read The Quaker because trust me The Heretic is excellent um, and if you read The Quaker after reading The Heretic it, it, a lot of the pleasure of it is going to be spoiled for you because you know it's a mystery um, so that part will be spoiled and also there's things about the main character's life um, which come out through the course of The Quaker um, which will be spoiled for you if you read The Heretic first um, and secondly I think that the author um, Liam McIlvaney, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, is doing something really fantastic here and something that's really unusual in crime fiction. So bear with me for a second and I'll explain what it is. So if you think about detective, you know, series of detective novels, um, what normally happens in those books is you get, um, you, you know, you get a series of different mysteries that the detective gets involved in um, solving and there may be continuing threads, you know, between the books. Um, but generally speaking, they are, you know, they're, they're independent mysteries of each other. And, and crucially, what you normally see is you don't really, you don't really get a sense of the passage of time through a series. So as I've said on my series, uh, on my channel before, I'm a massive fan of the Ed Seventh Precinct series by Ed McBain. Now that series, he was writing for 50 years and the, the detectives that he writes about are probably, you know, by the end, by the end of the series, you, you get the sense they're maybe about 10 years older than they were at the start, no more than that. And society, you know, the society he's writing about clearly changes over that 50 years. And there are kind of the odd reference to it, but he never really addresses the fact that, um, you know, that, that, that the detectives of, of, of age 50, you know, have in effect aged 50 years. Um, and that's typical in detective series. Um, you know, you, you get a series of mysteries. There's, there's never really a sense of how much time has passed between, you know, one book and another. Um, and, the, you know, the central characters don't age. So what Nim McIlvaney has done um, in these books is completely turn that on its head. Um, and I think it's brilliant. I think it's a, a real masterstroke. So the first book, The Quaker, is set in 1969. Um, this book is set in 1976. Um, and he, he comes up with quite a clever way of... of explaining why there's that you know that that time difference um which you know means it all makes sense and, and it works very well as a book um but to have you know been very explicit about the fact that there's there's seven years between the books i think is really really clever um and he's also so i reached out to him on twitter and he's confirmed that the third book in the series is going to be set in 1981 so another five years on and what he's doing i think and and i think this is brilliant is so the books are set in glasgow and what he's doing is he's painting a picture. He's, you know, he's given himself this massive canvas by spreading the, the books out time-wise. And he's painting a picture of Glasgow um, as it evolved from the late 60s onwards. And also painting a picture of, you know, the life of his central character. So um, Duncan McCormack, who's the, you know, the main detective in these books, the cop, becomes not just a detective. He becomes, you know, a, a real living man. Um, whose life experience um, is, you know, no doubt going to change the way he he deals with the crimes he's investigating, um, and, and also there are things about his character which reflect on society. Um, and there's already, you know, you're already in the first two books seeing some differences between how he was in the first book and how he is in the second book. I think that's really, really clever. Uh, if, if you're aware of another series of crime novels that does that, let me know because I'm not. I'm sure there is one out there. 
um, but it really struck me as, as a brilliant uh, a, a brilliant approach to writing this sort of book. Obviously, it means that there can only be probably a finite you know number of books in the series, um, which is a shame because they're really really good. Um, but I think it's really clever. So if if you don't know, so let's talk a bit about the setting and and. Both books have a fantastic sense of place. So if you don't know, Glasgow in the you know the late sixties into the seventies was a was a pretty grim place. Um, there was a you know a really big problem with um, like teenage gangs and things like that in the sixties in particular, as there were in you know in lots of parts of the UK. Um, but I think it was particularly bad in in Glasgow, and it was a particularly deprived city as well. Um, you know, terrible levels of poverty, um, people living in you know appalling accommodation and things like that. Um, and as things moved into the 70s, those gangs and, and they I think that were tended to refer to or the you know juvenile delinquents, if you like, um, were referred to locally as Neds. Um, and there's references to Neds in, in the, the heretic. Um, as things progressed into the 70s, those gangs, um, you know, coalesced into basically organised crime organisations. Um, and you see that in these books and he does it, you know, he does it really well. So. In terms of plot, so um, the heretic starts with the discovery um, of a, a, a body of a man um, who's unidentified, and, and it's about so Duncan McCormack, who's the the lead cop, um, trying to you know identify the corpse and find out what's happened to it. So you know, classic mystery stuff. Um, McCormack's got a female; um, she's not a partner, but like subordinate, um, DC Nichol. Um, who's a fantastic character as well. So they're both, you know, really, really strong central characters that really feel like real people. Um, and, you know, as they investigate things, um, you know, they're, they're, there's lots of twists and turns in the plot. Um, McCormack and Nicola are also investigating um, this guy called Maitland, who's like a local gangster. Um, and, you know, his... Um, his his organisation gets implicated in you know some of the stuff that's going on you know as as you would expect it to to be honest with you but there's tons of different threads in this book um, and it works brilliantly as a mystery because of that there's loads of different stuff going on um, and you can't quite figure out how it's all going to come together but naturally it does at the end and it does so brilliantly um, so yeah it's a, it's a really good mystery novel um, and it's a good it, it's very much from like the, what I would call the shoe leather school of of mystery so you know lots of you know walking around visiting people talking to people going to the scene of the crime and investigating you know inspecting it and things like that talking to experts all that good you know really good police procedural stuff which i really enjoy rather than the more um you know kind of philosophical type of detective who sits in a darkened room and cogitates um so yeah re a really good detective novel and a really good crime novel as well thinking about crime more broadly so um, you know, lots of stuff about, uh, about gangsters, as, as I've referred to, which works really well, and about organised crime in, in, in Glasgow. Um, and also broader, and I don't want to spoil things here, but broader discussion of um, abuses of power, let's say, and things like that. So there's, you know, a subplot, um, which I can't, I can't even say what it's about because it will spoil it, but there's a subplot that's very much about how, you know, powerful people in society abuse their privileges um, and take advantage of the underprivileged. Um, so there's a real kind of um, sense of, you know, a desire for social justice at, at the heart of the book, which I thought was, was great and, it, and, and really powerful as well. It, it was a book that left me, you know, some of the crimes in the book are appalling and, and left me quite shaken reading them. And I would say it's not a graphic book by any means, but it's one of those books that's so well written that even when he's describing things in a, a fairly, you know, he, it, he describes terrible things that have happened very quickly and almost, you know, very subtly. So characters, you know, refer to them rather than things being explicitly described. Um, and it's it's massively effective it's it's a really chilling book um in uh, you know at times and there's also I'm, I'm conscious i'm rambling all over the place here because i just really like this book so much there's also some fantastic action scenes so only a couple but he ramps up the tension so much that when these things happen you're so invested in the outcome um that they're truly truly gripping um 
so yeah so let me so let's summarize right so um so it's got a good it's got a good mystery at its heart it's got a couple of great central characters in in mccormack and nickel who you know you learn more and more about their backstories and their lives and things like that and you really you really bond with them as as people um it's got a, a cast of uh, you know supporting characters in the police force who are all really good and witnesses and things like that and you know sometimes he will he'll bring up a character who's only on you know only on screen if you like for a couple of pages um but who's still you know they still come to life and feel like real people um some fantastically evil villains um who are you know a, a pleasure to read and and a pleasure to to see them get their come up and um and as i say this this you know this broad sweeping portrait of of glasgow um which is really fascinating to read and, and i really can't wait to see what he does next it, it feels like one of those things that's a bit of a labor of love um it's you know so this this book is it's like 520 pages which i didn't realize because i was reading a, an e-arc on my kindle um and i finished it in like a couple of days and it did not feel like a 500 page book it felt like a 300 page book it's so gripping and so well written that um, I, I had no idea it was so long. I think I can't remember how long the first book is, but I don't think it's I don't think it's five hundred pages. But it it works beautifully. It's I I can't I, I can't praise it highly enough. You you really should pick it up. But as I say, read. I would strongly recommend reading the Quaker first. So the Quaker is also excellent. Um, but I think you will you'll get more out of um, you'll get more out of the Heretic if you read the Quaker first. Um, and also, I think this is shaping up to be a really fantastic series. I think, you know, I don't know when the next book in the series is going to come out. There's been four years between books one and two. Um, but I really hope it comes out fairly soon because I cannot wait to read it. Um, I, th I think this is, at the moment, this feels like my favourite current crime series. Um, you know, and that's based on only two books. So, you know, high praise indeed. So if you like the sound of that, I strongly recommend you pick up a copy. Um, it's out on Thursday the 20th. This video is going up on the 18th, which means you've got two days to get yourself a copy of The Quaker and read it first if you haven't done so already. Um, but yeah, I, I, as, as I say, read The Quaker first, uh, but definitely read The Heretic as well. They're both fantastic books. Okay, hope that was interesting and useful. Um, do let me know what you think. Let me know if you've read um, The Quaker or any other of Liam McIverney's books. I think he has written a few other things as well, um, which I need to get to because he's bloody good. Um, so, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've read similar um, crime fiction. I know that um, Dennis Mina um, also tends to set her books in Glasgow um, and she wrote a great historical crime novel called The Long Drop, which I think was set in the 50s. Um, which has a, quite a similar vibe to it, actually, to, to these books. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you've read that. And if you haven't, that's another one I'd definitely recommend. Um, as always, hope you're safe and well. Hope you've had um, a good reading week. Um, and you look forward to speaking to you again soon. Cheerio.